What's up guys? I'm here on a paver job. You see our pavers just delivered here. What we're building in the back is a raised paver patio. So we already started digging everything out. This outside that's much deeper here, this is where the wall is going to be built. Up top there's going to be a landing in front of this back door. Over here the paver, the patio height is going to be at the bottom of the siding. So when you walk out, they'll just step out onto the patio. This side will need the landing because it's it's higher. At this point, you can see we have our geofabric down. And I'm using the mini excavator to run the three-quarter modified back and forth from the trailer into our work area. This is our first lift. We like to get down about three inches and then run the compactor on it. Phil's checking the elevation as we go to make sure we're putting it down pretty evenly. It doesn't need to be exact on the first two lifts, but we like to keep it close. So when we get to that last lift, it's not as hard to get it level. All right, so we got our base in. We got about eight inches modified in here. We compacted it in three lifts. And now we're gonna start setting block. So here I'm setting the first course of block. And this, just like building a retaining wall, this, this course takes the longest. You have to level your blocks left to right, front to back, make sure they stay aligned with each other. You can see I had Phil put down a real thin layer of modified. It's, it makes it a little bit easier with leveling if you have a, a thin layer of screenings down. We just had to adjust the course a little bit because we weren't respecting our string line enough and uh, some modified was holding it down. So you need to be careful of your string line at all times. So we got our base course in and we got it secured with uh, about six inches of modified in the back and a good four inches in the front. And it's very important to secure the base course, especially before you add any more courses. That way, nothing's gonna shift or move around on you. This is our second course of wall block. These get glued and pinned. I give you guys a little close up of that in just a second, but this course goes much faster than the first one. As you can see, you're basically just setting the blocks. The only thing you need to keep an eye out for is making sure you're staggering your seams. Um, each manufacturer is a little bit different. They'll tell you to maintain at least two, three inches, sometimes four or five. So you want to just keep an eye on your seams as you go. All right, with these blocks, I like to get a couple dabs of glue in. Make sure you don't have any big rocks sticking up. Then we we'll use these pins. The pins slide down in these grooves and sit right in that notch. I'm taking a screwdriver just to tap it down to make sure it's all the way in. And that's it, it's locked in place. So there we have our three courses of block on. That's our, that's our last course. And now we're getting ready to build our steps. There's going to be two steps right here. So that's a wrap for today. You see we got our steps in and we put a nice thick edging of concrete all the way around it. A lot of times when you build steps you could just backfill it in with modified, get it in there nice and tight, but I like putting concrete around it just so it's extra secure. So you can see our modified is built up to the existing grade towards the house. We recompacted everything, the existing sub base and our modified there 
and now I'm putting in another layer of the geo fabric. I don't like to put in just one layer when there's multiple grade changes. So I brought up the grade behind the wall to be close to the existing grade that was by the house, compacted it all, put that additional layer of geo fabric in, and now we're just gonna build up that grade to match the height of the wall. I believe we did it in about three lifts because it was a total of eight or nine inches. Now we're making the cuts for the caps that are going to go on the landing area. I had to cut four caps on a 45 and then I had to put two smaller caps to go up against the house. Actually I think they were full size, I just had to notch them to get around that J channel on the siding. Once we got that done, we, you saw Phil tamped in some modified and now we're putting the caps on the steps. Those we had to trim so they didn't uh, overhang too far. Now we're going to put the pavers in in the landing. Those all had to be cut. I think we got one row in, well one staggered row and then all the ones that went against the house had to be cut. We try to keep all the cuts against the house so they're not as noticeable. So now I'm running my compactor over the pavers to get them compacted. If you notice I'm wearing Crocs, that's because my boots were real muddy. So I brought the Crocs with me because I didn't want to muck up the patio. I'm not running the compactor along the border, um, that outside border near the cap because I didn't want to risk chipping any of the caps. So I'm just running them on the pavers and then I'm going to go back around with the mallet and a piece of wood and just tamp them down a little bit by hand. Now I'm going to sweep in the poly sand as normal. I'm using a small broom because my big push broom, the handle actually broke, so it took a little bit longer. So that's it, guys. That's how you build a raised page paper patio. As usual, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I also have some other how-to videos on retaining walls, so be sure to check those out.